Sunday night and CBS presents The Whistler. I, the whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the amazing story of mind over matter. Do you believe there is such a thing as sixth sense, that mind reading is possible? Many people believe that nothing enters the mind except by way of the five senses, but I know better. I know there is such a thing as telepathy. Else, how would I know the things that I know? Yes, and Herbert Randall knows, too. He believes because he's a student of parapsychology. Herbert is highly attuned to extrasensory perception. He believes that a person can learn things without the use of the five physical senses. At the moment, Herbert Randall, the textbook in his lap, is apparently dozing. His young wife, Andrea, reads a magazine in the opposite corner of the room. Herbert is mumbling to himself. Yes. Yes, I understand. I see you. I hear you. My unfinished manuscript, you must find it. I am Thomas Banning. You must get the manuscript. I am Thomas Banning, my manuscript. The title is Mind Over Matter. You must come to me. You must come. You must. Herbert. Thomas Banning. I see you. I'll find it. I'll come. Herbert. Huh? What? what? Are you mumbling about. Oh, Andrea. You've been dreaming, mumbling to yourself. I haven't been asleep. I've been wide awake. I saw him. I heard him. You were dreaming. No, not for an instant. Thomas Banning, manuscript. That's what you've been mumbling. Who's Thomas Banning? Oh, he, he was a writer of books on psychic phenomena. I've never met him, never seen him until tonight. In a dream? No, no, it wasn't a dream. I wasn't asleep. And the message was too clear. Thomas Banning was trying, is trying to reach me. And he did. Still in the dream? Oh, dream or not, it was real. I've never met the man, never seen him. How could I dream about someone I'd never seen? I've got to locate Thomas Banning. Well, why? He has an unfinished manuscript, and he wants me to have it. Well, maybe he's dead. Well, not necessarily. This is no spook stuff. This is a case of a living mind trying to contact me. Oh, but why you, Herbert? You said you don't even know him. That doesn't matter. He must know of me. Thomas Banning. Unfinished manuscript entitled Mind Over Matter. Well, how can you find him, especially if you don't know what he looks like? I saw him. I heard him. And I'll find him. How? Through his publisher. He's written several books. I'll find him tomorrow. So Herbert learns the name of the publisher of Thomas Banning's books. Learns Banning's address in the country. With Andrea drives to the place. As they near the estate, they stop at a gas station for further direction. Howdy, folks. What can I do for you? Uh, we're looking for the Thomas Banning home. Know where it is? Yep, I sure do. Why? Uh, we're going there. Well, it's a quarter of a mile ahead. First gate on the left-hand side. But not many people go there anymore. Why not? Well, miss, since the day Thomas Manning's brother disappeared, there's been strange things going on there. Oh, what strange things? Noises, weird howls and screams. People kind of think the place is haunted with William Banning's ghost. William was Thomas's brother. Oh, is William dead? Oh, nobody knows what happens to William. Just blew in from South America and a few months later disappeared. Uh, have you heard the screams? Yeah, and what's more, I don't want even to talk about it. So long, folks. First gate in the left. Well, this really begins to sound interesting. <laughs> Yes? What is it? Is Thomas Banning in? What did you want? Who are you? Why, I'm Herbert Randall for Gregory House Publishers. Well? We, we publish Mr. Banning's works. Oh, this is my assistant, Miss Adams. I see. Come in. Wait here a moment. Yeah, bit of an icicle, isn't she? I don't like it, Herbert. Let's go. No. Thomas Banning is trying to direct me to do something. And I'm going to follow through. My uncle will see you in the library. This way. This is Mr. Randall, and this is Miss Adams. They're from your publisher, Gregory. Oh, well, come in. Sit down. Uh, this is my nephew, Bart. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? What did you want to see my uncle about? Why, I, uh, well, I, I'd like to talk to him about that. Uh, what was it you wanted, Mr. Randall? 
You're quite free to speak in front of us, Mr. Randall. I attend to all his business. Don't I, Uncle Thomas? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, of course, Bart. Uh, what was it you wanted? Well, I, I'd rather talk to you alone, Mr. Banning. <laughs> Come now. If it's about the publishing business, there should be no secret about that. No. Uh, this is your nephew, Mr. Banning? Yes, uh, of course. And... and I'm his niece, Velma Banning. Are you quite satisfied, Mr. Randall? Uh, I guess so. Then get on with your business. Very well. When are you going to finish your manuscript, Mr. Banning? In my manuscript? Yes, the one you haven't finished. Uncle has no unfinished manuscript. Oh, I know. I explained to Mr. Gregory that I hadn't started the proposed book and that I did not intend to write any more. Well, Mr. Gregory was under the impression that you'd already started it. Well, no. That is... Uncle I... Thomas has given up writing. He's been having trouble with his eyes. Uh, this is rather an odd time of the night to be on a business call. Well, I, I'm sorry if I've inconvenienced you. Please accept our apologies, Mr. Banning. Uh, quite all right, young man. I, I'm i sorry I can't help you further. Help me? I Well, I mean, I'm sorry I can't write anymore. But if my eyes improve, I may be able to do something again. You understand? Yes. Yes, I think I do. Well, thanks for the interview, Mr. Banning. Good night. Good night, Mr. Randall. Come again later on. Good night. Good night. I'll show you to the door. Good night. Well, what do you think of that, Andrea? It's Banning, exactly as I saw him in the vision. I still don't like it. Did you get the meaning of the situation? No. What do you mean, Herbert? Oh, I sensed it the second I walked into the room. You would. What was it? Thomas Banning was lying about that manuscript. Did you notice the way those two butted in and led the conversation? He's afraid of them. They've got him cornered for some reason. He was afraid to speak the truth. It... Say, look. Yes. What is that, a grave? Uh, it certainly looks like a grave. Herbert, it is a grave. And freshly dug. A small one, but just about right for Thomas Banning. Oh, Herbert, what do you mean? And look, look over there. Another one, but filled in. You can tell by the way the grass is sunken. Come on, let's get out of here. Now, there's certainly something strange going on here. Herbert, Herbert. Now, now, take it easy. They're killing him. We've got to stop No, them. no, wait. There's nothing we can do at the moment. We wouldn't have a chance. Come on, let's get back. Herbert, what is it? What's wrong? There it is again. And I'm wide awake. I heard it again. Oh, I didn't hear a thing. The manuscript. You've got to get the manuscript. He reached me again. Oh, please, Herbert, please, let's go. Yes, Andrea. We'll go now. So Andrea and Herbert go home. Andrea goes to bed, but Herbert sits up, concentrating, waiting, waiting for another contact, another message. But Andrea, try as she might, cannot go to sleep. Please, Herbert, please come to bed. I can't go to sleep with you sitting there staring into space. Gives me the willies. Oh, I can't sleep. I couldn't possibly. Well, he may not appear again tonight. He doesn't have to appear. This is no spook business, I tell you. He can reach me instantly. Oh, please, Herbert, at least turn out the light. Oh, very well. Sorry to upset you, darling. But I've got to follow this through. I've just got to. Thomas Banning. Thomas Banning. Thomas Banning. Find the manuscript. Mind over matter. Get the manuscript. You must get the manuscript. You must. You must. You must. The next morning, Herbert is up early after a sleepless night and pays another visit to Mr. Gregory of Gregory House, Thomas Banning's publisher. I'm Herbert Randall, Mr. Gregory. I was here yesterday to get the address of Thomas Banning. Yes, I remember. Well, uh, I'm with the Parapsychology Laboratory of State University. We were interested in knowing if Thomas Banning is planning another book. Well, we've published all of his works and expect him to do another. About six months ago, he wrote us that he had one half completed and hoped to finish it shortly. And you've heard nothing further about it? Yes. I talked to him a few weeks ago and asked him what he intended to do about the new book. He said he'd abandoned the idea of any further writing because of his eyes. Said he hadn't even started on the book. Hadn't started it? But he told you previously that he had it half finished. Yes. He seemed reluctant to talk about it, so I dropped the subject. Don't like to say this, but it occurred to me that Banning was, well, slipping a little. Mentally, I mean. 
Losing his mind, is that what you mean? Yes, Randall. So I thought it better to say no more about it. He seemed to be terribly dis- depressed. Uh, have you any idea what might have caused such a condition? No. It may have been brought on by the disappearance of his brother. I'd never met the brother, but he had come up from South America. Been living there for many years. A few months after his arrival, he vanished. That's all I know about it. I see. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Gregory. I guess we'll just have to forget about any further works by Thomas Banning. Good morning. <laughs> Mr. Hellman, I understand you're Thomas Banning's banker. I am? What about it? Well, Randall's my name. I, uh, I'm a psychologist. I am working on the case of Thomas Banning. Then he is crazy. Crazy? No. No, but he is ill. Suffering from a severe emotional disturbance. Oh, oh I, I see. Uh, what made you jump to the conclusion that he was crazy? Well, I, I, I don't know. Uh, you're a psychologist. Well, what so had he I... done, Mr. Hellman? That seems so strange. Well, he, he came in here in a terrible hurry one day and drew out all his money. Turned all his assets into cash, except the country place, walked out. He acted very nervous, very queerly. I knew something was wrong with him. I figured he was losing his mind. Mm-hmm. Now, was that before or after his brother William disappeared? Oh, I think it was before, but I'm not positive. Uh, tell me, did you ever meet his brother? No, I was a bit surprised to learn that he had a brother. But he'd been living in South America for 20 years. Mm-hmm. Did the brother have any children? Stand, he had a son who came with him, and the son brought his wife. That's all I know about it. I see. Uh, Thomas must have had a considerable amount of cash. Yes, he left here with something like a hundred thousand in large bills. Hundred thousand. Mm. Uh, then you would say that such actions indicated that something was wrong with him, uh, that he was decidedly not his normal self. I certainly would say that. I think he concentrated so much on spooks and the supernatural that he just cracked up over his subject. Well. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Hellman, for the information. You're quite welcome. Oh, by the way, uh, who, who did you say you were? Uh, Herbert Randall. You can check on me through the Parapsychological Laboratory of State University. Good morning, Mr. Hellman. That evening, Herbert and Andrea drive once more to the Banning Estate. They arrive, turn in at the gate, as they drive up the lane. Herbert, look. Well, what do you know about that? That mound of earth is gone. The hole's been filled in. Good heavens, then they've already killed him. Oh, you're probably right. Oh, they're desperate, Herbert. They'll do anything. Let's don't go in there. No telling what they'll do. Please, Herbert, let's go back. Well, here we are, Andrea. Oh. Come on. I don't remember seeing any servants here last time. Oh, they probably don't want anybody around. Not even us. Yes? Oh, good evening. I wonder if we could see Mr. Banning again. Do you always attend to business at night, Mr. Randall? Well, no, it just so happens that I... Come in. I'm afraid my uncle is retired. He's not very well, you know. It's quite a long trip down here. If he possibly can, I wish he'd see me now. He's here, isn't he? Of course. Uh, just a moment. I'll speak to my husband. Be careful now, Herbert. Anything might happen. I know that. I'm prepared. I've got my gun. Will you step into the library? You stay out here, Andrea. Come in, Mr. Randall. Yes, come in, Mr. Randall. Mr. Banning. Uh, good evening, Randall. Well, I... I... Oh, well, how are you? Didn't you come here to see Mr. Banning? Oh, uh, yes, but I... You I... seem so surprised. What do you want this time? Oh, well, I, I want to talk a little further about the book. Couldn't I possibly see you alone, Mr. Banning? <laughs> You're going to start that again, Randall? What are you so worried about? Go ahead and speak your piece. I'd prefer to talk with him alone. You're just a bit of a nuisance, Randall. Very well. I'd like to know why you won't finish your manuscript, Mr. Banning. He told you he hadn't started it because of his eyes. He could dictate it. He's too ill to concentrate on writing a book. Is that true, Mr. Banning? Well, yes, I have been ill lately. But if you hadn't started it, you'd have gone to the extent of completing the research for it. Your discoveries are important, Mr. Banning. We need them. If you'll just outline your research to me, I'll write it for you. You owe that to the profession. Uncle is in constant pain. Oh, he is? 
I'm terribly sorry about that, Mr. Manning. And he doesn't feel in the mood to have someone around prodding him all the time for information in order to publish a book. But he does want the book published. And he wants me to help him, I know. You're a conceited sort of individual, Randall. I know what I'm talking about. He wants me to help him with that book. Do you, Uncle? Well, I would like to write the book, but... What? I uh, really don't see how I can under the circumstances. What circumstances? His physical condition, of course. Now look, Mr. Banning, maybe I can help you about this so-called physical condition. I don't think it's really a physical condition. I think it's a mental condition. Mental? Yes. I think you're really mentally ill. What do you mean? I think he's emotionally upset over the death of his brother. Who said he was dead? Well, he disappeared. It's presumed that he's dead. Shortly after his brother disappeared, Mr. Banning gave up his work. He wanted to give the benefit of his research to science, but he just couldn't collect his thoughts. Go on, son. You loved your brother. And I'm sure that I can help you get at the root of your seeming trouble and enable you to finish your book. But he hasn't started it. Then I can help him start it and finish it. Oh, believe me, we need that research. We need the book. Who is we? The field of psychology needs it. So you're a psychologist, Mr. Randall? Yes. Then you'd better analyze yourself. Uncle hasn't said a word about wanting you to help him write anything. But he does, I know. He tried to contact me, didn't you? Ridiculous. He hasn't phoned or been out of the house in weeks and weeks. He knows what I'm talking about. Now I ask you, Uncle, have you tried to get in touch with this man? Have you? No. There you are. I understand, Mr. Banning. Don't worry. Uh, however... If Uncle wants you to stay and see what can be done, why, that's entirely up to him. Do you, Mr. Banning? Uh, yes, I'd like you to stay. Very well. Whatever you say, Uncle. Velma, put them up in the East Wing. Where's your room, Mr. Banning? Why, uh... In the West Wing, Mr. Randall. <laughs> The hours of the evening pass. Herbert and Andrea sit in their room in the Banning house waiting. Still waiting for another message. Another contact Herbert is confident will come now clearer than ever. Then you think that he hid the money on the estate and they're trying to force him to tell where it is? Yes. When I drove up the driveway tonight and saw that hole filled in, I felt sure they'd killed him. But they wouldn't do that until he told them where the money was. Since the hole was filled in, it stands to reason that they've only been digging in an effort to find it. But what happened to the brother? Why would the nephew do away with his own father? Well, maybe he didn't. Maybe Thomas Banning had something to do with that. An argument over the money. You mean Thomas killed his brother because the brother was trying to get the money? Oh, it's possible. Anything is possible. What? And if the brother was as nasty as the nephew, I wouldn't blame Thomas Banning. But the climax will come tonight. The nephew and his wife are suspicious of us. They know they'll have to work fast. Oh, what a situation. Oh, please go to bed, Andrea. Let me concentrate on this thing, and I'm sure I'll have the answer before morning. Very well, Herbert. Good night, dear. Now, long past midnight, Herbert, half asleep, sits in a big armchair in the bedroom in the east wing of the huge house. Then Herbert begins to stir. Herbert Randall, Herbert Randall, the manuscript... Mind over matter in the library, law's shelf on the right. Mind over matter, law's shelf on the right. Get it now, get it now, get it now. Library. So a shelf on the right. Andrea, Andrea. What is it, Herbert? I got it, I got the message. The manuscript is in the library, lower shelf on the right. Come on, quiet now. Turn on the lights, Andrea. Lower shelf on the right. Here we are. Oh, I hope they can't see the light from the other wing. Please hurry. I'm frightened to death of all this. I wish we hadn't come here. Here it is. Look, here it is. Mind over matter. He did start it. And it's unfinished. Stopped at page 313. Well, then come on. Let's get out of here before they catch us. Andrea. What is it? Look. Look, Andrea. Here in the middle of the script. Two $50,000 negotiable bonds. Good heavens. Negotiable bonds? Why, it's the same as money. Anybody can cash them. So that's what he did with his money. This is what those two were after. This is why he's been kept a prisoner. This is why they've been torturing him. Oh, poor man. Come on, I'm going to the West Wing. Maybe we can slip into Banning's room without them knowing it. It's unlocked. You stay here in the doorway and keep a lookout. All right, but hurry. 
Um, uh, what is it? Quiet, Mr. Benning. Uh, I've got to talk to you. Uh, uh, what is it, Randall? I finally got the message. It was as clear as could be, and I found it. I found the manuscript. You found it? Yes, in the library, just as you said. Then you'd best take it and leave here quickly as you can. It isn't safe for you here. But I can't leave, not just yet. You must leave. Take the manuscript and go. But it isn't finished. You can finish it. You must please go before it's too late. But I can't finish it without the research material for the rest of the book. There isn't time for that. You have the manuscript. Please go at once. No. I know what's going on here, Mr. Banning. And I refuse to leave. I know what those two, your nephew and your niece, are doing. They're keeping you a prisoner. Torturing you to make you tell what you did with the money. Don't stay here another minute, Randall. I'll go, but I insist that you go with me. The manuscript is the important thing. You have it. So get away from here as fast as you can. Not without you. Now, come on. I... I can't... I can't leave. Why not? What's to stop you? I... I can't walk. Can't walk? What do you mean? I can't move. They... They've been injecting something in my back. It paralyzes from the waist down. What? What? Then I'll carry you out of the place. Please go. They might hear you. I'll have the police here in a matter of minutes. Hello. Hello. Dead as a doornail. You've seen to everything. Now, do you believe me? You haven't a chance against such desperate people. You have the manuscript. That's the important thing. Get it safely away from here and then do whatever you like about them. All right. I'll get out now with the manuscript. But I'll be back with the police in half an hour, sooner if possible. Yes, but please hurry, Randall. Come on, Andrea. Back to our room. Get our clothes. Hurry, Andrea. Step on it. I am. I am. Oh, dear. I wish that phone was working. Say, maybe this one is. Maybe just that one extension was pulled off. Does it work? No, no. It's dead, too. They're all dead. Come on, Andrea. Let's go. Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh. There it is again. Did you hear that? Oh, heavens, yes. They must be wise to us. Probably hurt us, and they're going to give him the works this time. It's their last chance. Oh, I can't stand it, Herbert. It's horrible. I'm not going to let them torture that old man any longer. I'm going back to his room. Well, then I'm going with you. Come on. Careful now, Andrea. Stand back when I open the door. All right. Mr. Banning. Mr. Banning. Randall. Randall, why haven't you gone? You must go. I heard you scream. I can't go and leave you to be tortured to death. But the manuscript... Oh, hang the manuscript. And the money, too. They'll be safe. Money? Yes, the bonds. Don't worry, I'll take care of them. You... You found the money? Yes, pasted in the manuscript. But I refuse to leave here without you. Andrea, take this manuscript and go back to our room. And lock yourself in. I'm going to wait here for those two to come back. Do you hear me, Andrea? Yes, yes, I hear Well, then hurry. Herbert. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Andrea. Did you hear that? Yes, I certainly did. It came from another room. The same scream? The same scream. What does it mean? Give me that manuscript, Andrea. Mr. Banning. Mr. Banning. Yes, son, yes. Do you remember the number of the last page of your manuscript? No, no, I can't remember. I I just can't. On this last page of your manuscript, you began a new chapter. There are two paragraphs here. The last paragraph says, in other words, there are certain positive relations and certain negative ones between extrasensory perception and other processes of the mind. Is that your last paragraph? Yes, that was the last paragraph. You must carry on from there. Get up out of that bed, Mr. Banning. You're lying. No, no, please believe me. You're lying. There are not two paragraphs here, only one. And the words I quoted are not here. They're from a textbook by Professor Rhine. Get out of that bed and start walking through that door. Herbert, do you know what you're doing? You see, he can walk. And don't make a false move, Banning, or I'll shoot. Now through that door and down the hall. Oh. All right, Banning. Open that door. Randall. Put up your hands, both of you. Now get away from that bed. Who is this man? Herbert, look. His hands and feet are tied to the bed. Yes. But take a look at his face. Why, Mr. Banning. Exactly. A little thin, but it is Mr. Banning. Untie him and be quick about it. Mr. Banning. Mr. Banning, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. You're Herbert Randall. Thank God you got my message. I knew I could get through to you. I knew, and you got the manuscript. Yes, yes, I have it here. I only got to page 313, one paragraph ending. Therefore, I am positive that thoughts can be transferred from one mind to another, regardless of distance. Right, word for word. Uh, you, You have the manuscript and the money, the two bonds? Yes. What do you want me to do with the bonds? As you see fit, my boy. Then this man is your brother, William? Yes. Uh, Don't talk anymore. I'll add the rest. 
These two are not his nephew and his niece. They're his son and his daughter-in-law. They came from South America. They knew you had money and decided to get it. You suspected it, withdrew your money, turned it into bonds and hid it, knowing that even if they did go to the extent of killing you, they'd have nothing but this house. When they learned that you'd withdrawn your money, they held you prisoner to force you to tell what you did with it, where you hid it. That's why they dug holes all over the estate. You're absolutely crazy, Randall. You had me all fooled for a while. I thought your father, William, was dead. I figured you two were holding Thomas a prisoner. And you were. But all the while, William was posing as Thomas. And he got away with it because Thomas and William were twins. Twin brothers. What of it? We're still his heirs. The money still goes to us. We'll let the state decide that. Don't worry, Mr. Banning. Everything will be... Mr. Banning. Mr. Banning. Oh. He's dead. He dead? But, but we didn't kill him. The state can decide that, too. This is a wonderful testimonial for parapsychology, gentlemen. And you three are going to have the opportunity to bear me out in my statements. It's a shame it had to happen in this way. But since it did, I'm proud that he selected me to help prove his theory. Why he did, I'll never know. But I'm grateful to him. Very grateful. Yes, Herbert, you're grateful. And as to why he chose you, You'll know when you turn to page 213 of the manuscript, Mind Over Matter. There's an insert pasted there. Go on, Herbert. Read it. Twenty years ago, my wife ran away with another man, taking with her our young son. I never heard from them again. But last week, I learned the whereabouts of my son, who had assumed the surname of his stepfather. Since my brother William has returned from South America, I fear for the safety of my life and my fortune. I know they plan to kill me since they have learned of the existence of my son. So I have turned all my assets to cash and will them and my unfinished manuscript, Mind Over Matter, to my son, whose address is 214 East 32nd Street, this city. What? And whose name is Herbert Randall. Andrea, I'm his son. Herbert. If you get this, God bless you, my son, and carry on with our great work which is destined someday soon to eradicate the boundaries of time and space. Your father, Thomas Banning. Just a chance coincidence, you say? That's such a convenient explanation for the layman who doesn't understand, and safer, too, to be skeptical and conservative. But one mind can reach another regardless of time or space. And you will agree with me someday. I know. <laughs> CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. I, the Whistler, bid you good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.